Hey guys, I just purchased this Traeger Pro 575 model from Home Depot and I'm pretty excited about it. I'm gonna unbox it in this video and I'm gonna show you my first impressions. I'm gonna show you how to assemble it and my hope is that in this video, it will give you a better idea of how to assemble it if you've already purchased it. And also if you're looking at purchasing this model but you're still a little bit on the fence, maybe it'll give you some more information that will help you make that purchase decision. I purchased this unit with my own money. I don't have any affiliation with Traeger. They're not paying me to do this. This is just genuine, honest, authentic uh, reactions as I unbox this. I don't have much past knowledge of the Traeger line of smokers. I do own a Pit Boss pellet smoker. I've smoked on offset smokers. I've done barbecue competitions. I've smoked in water smokers and electric smokers and all sorts of different types of grills. So I have a lot of experience in a whole wide array of smokers, but this is the first time I've tried a Traeger. So I'm pretty excited to try it out. The main reason that I bought this is because of the digital control technology. It has a uh, Digital Pro D2 controller with Wi-Fi technology. And that really excited me because uh, the idea of connecting to your home Wi-Fi, being able to monitor the internal temperature of the meat and really zeroing in on what temperature it's cooking at, how, how long it's cooking at that temperature. That really intrigued me because usually I'm checking my smoker and my low and slow meat like every couple hours. And I'm uh, really intrigued about how this could make my life easier. So that's what I'm gonna explore a little bit as I make these videos and as I cook more on this model. So I hope you'll join me in the videos I make after this one. Let's get to the video. All right, before we unbox it, I'm just gonna read off some of the features and just my first impressions of the box. We've got the, I'm just reading the back of the box, which is the same as the front, which you can see. It says Pro 575 with Digital Pro D2 controller, uh, which is, as I said in the intro, is the reason that I am buying this unit. It's got Wi-Fi technology, which is Wi-Fi technology. It, ho it hooks up to your home Wi-Fi and you can control it through the Traeger app, which is super cool. It uh, has a bunch of features. So usually in product packaging, companies like to put the features that they think are gonna be most compelling to you and will influence you the most to make a purchasing decision. They'll put those in big bold letters up front and they'll usually start with those first in a list and they'll have the least important features on the bottom, makes sense, right? So the first feature is Wi-Fi technology and the D2 drivetrain and they also have advanced grill logic. So those are the first three features that are listed. So Traeger's really pushing those features and they're really using that as a uh, justification for the higher price point that you might find on this model, as opposed to some other models or some other brands that don't have that Wi-Fi and set and forget sort of capability. So keep that in mind as we go throughout this process and in the next video when I do a review, because that's gonna be really important to my review. So we've got some other features like an extra grill rack, which is cool. Exterior storage hooks for extra grill rack, hopper, clean out, saw horse chassis, and all-terrain wheels. So these wheels on the exterior of the box, they look pretty beefy, which is good because I roll my uh, pellet grill and my other grills and barbecues around the deck and the outside patio quite a bit. So that'll be nice. Uh, it has 575 square inches of cooking surface. So usually when they're naming these models, Traeger and other pellet grill brands are kind of similar. Uh, the 575 or whatever number is in the model number, that's usually the square inches of uh, how much cooking surface there is. It's also got a 18 pound hopper capacity, which is pretty good. That can hold almost an entire 20 pound bag of pellets, which is great because you can just dump almost an entire bag in there and not worry about having to store your other pellets somewhere else in that bag. So let's start opening this up. Just got a sharp knife here and I'm gonna take these straps off first. I just noticed that it says two people required for assembly, so we'll see if that's true, but uh, we don't need no stinking help, right? We can do this by ourselves. So we'll open this up. All right. So we'll move this back. You can already see that there's some graphics on the interior. And what Traeger does is they kind of make a kid's playhouse pattern on the inside of their box. So once you unpackage this, you can turn your box inside out and give it to the kids as like a little box playhouse. So that's kind of cool. It's a neat feature and it kind of goes to show who Traeger is targeting with their product. It's a, uh, you know, a big part of it is uh, family people, people with a lot of mouths to feed. 
and that have children, so interesting to keep in mind. But maybe that's just interesting to me and it's irrelevant to you and you just wanna see me open this thing. So let's get to it. All right, I brought my other camera in here just to give you a better shot of what I'm doing in here. So the first thing I see is there's uh, some sort of plate here. It looks like there's a bottle holder right at the top. So right at the very start that is telling me I should be drinking a beer as I assemble this. <laughs> I guess, I don't know what this thing is. It's got sort of two bottle holders and it's over top of the assembly. So we'll just put that to the side for now. I'm assuming this is so you can hold your beers while you're assembling it. I, I don't know what else it would be for. So put that to the side. And now we have a box that says, start here, show you that. And everything is like really well put together. There's this uh, nice deckling all over the outside. There's some branding. It says like barbecue. It's got some like pigs and cow and fish and stuff like that. It's pretty cool. Um, the boxes look really neat. So it looks really well put together so far. So I will follow the instructions and, and start here. We'll open this up. And as I suspected, there is a instruction manual on the inside. And it looks like there's also a, a meat probe in this same bag. So I will uh, open this up, put that to the side. And now I'm gonna give this a read so you guys don't have to, or so you don't have to read as much of it. And I'll be back in a second. All right guys, so I've taken a look at the assembly manual. It's pretty straightforward. The funny part actually right at the start is that uh, they have a six pack of beer as an optional piece of equipment. They give you pretty much everything you need. They have this blister pack with a wrench, with a screwdriver, a hex key, which is nice because you don't have to provide any of your own tools. They do not provide the six pack. You need to provide that yourself. So I thought that was kind of cool and it inspired me to grab a beer and use one of these little holder things that comes with the Traeger, so why not have fun while I'm doing this? Okay, so when I looked at the instruction manual, it's pretty straightforward. The assembly guide has nice big pictures. It also says that you can download the app and it has some instructional material on the app as well if you prefer to look at that sort of stuff. But the first step is to take everything out of the box and we'll set it all out on a clean surface. In this case, I'm using a piece of plywood on the ground here, so I'll do that now. Looks like we have a branded leg brace here. These go in between the legs to brace them together. And now we've got the actual unit itself. It's got a large piece of plastic over it, dust cover. So we'll take that out. We've got another long box here. Not sure what's in it. Okay, so here is the upper porcelain coated grill rack. Yeah, I like how everything just pulls nicely out of the bag. It's like effortless, which is really nice. Okay, now that everything is unloaded off the top of the Traeger, we can just lift this box off. All right, that worked pretty well. So now we'll take away the rest of this packaging material from the sides. All right, so now I'm gonna start looking inside of the main grill area and the hopper area. Little piece of tape right here. So we've got the smokestack for the chimney. It's all packaged up. So that's looking nice. And it also has uh, a handle on the inside of this package too. So we'll set that to the side. Here's the main power cord inside of the hopper box. Great feature of the Traeger is that the power cord is uh, detachable like you'd have on your computer, for example, um, which is nice because you can take it off and store it and it doesn't get stuck underneath the wheels when you're moving it around or putting it in your truck. Just makes it a lot nicer to plug and play. And we'll check out what is on the inside of the grill. All right, so more packaging material. We've got the grease bucket. Looks like this stuff is zap strapped in here. All right, so it looks like we have the, uh, the two legs and one of the bars or handlebars. And we've got another little box in here. I'm not sure what's in here, so let's check. All right, so it's like a honeycomb protector for your pellet box, so you can't stick your fingers in there and get them jammed up in the auger. I'm assuming that's what this is. 
And as you can see, as I'm going through all this, it takes up quite a bit of space and it starts to get pretty overwhelming at some point. So make sure you stay organized and keep your garbage and your packaging material to one side and lay everything out so it's it's organized because you can see everything's sprawling out because I don't have a big enough space. All right, cut this out. This is the grease drip bucket. Pretty simple. It's got an insert that catches the dripping so you don't have to put it right in the bucket and get it dirty. And it comes with a spare bucket, which is nice. So we'll put that to the side. All right, so we have the main grill grate here. Cut this off. This is the main porcelain coated grill grate. It looks really sturdy. It's pretty heavy. Uh, it's got the nice porcelain nonstick coating. It's got a lot of surface area, which is nice. This unit is very deep. It goes in a long way. A lot of pellet grills will only have maybe this much cooking area. So the extra depth really helps out a lot. And I'm pretty excited about cooking some pork butts and briskets on this thing because it looks like it has a lot of surface area, which is nice. I like the square format too, rather than the rectangle format. Uh, this could be good for ribs. So putting two big long racks of ribs on there and it looks like it could hold a lot of hamburgers a lot of meat, anything you're really cooking. So this looks pretty nice so far. And as we get kind of deeper into the main cooking chamber, it looks like there is a removable tray. So this is uh, an aluminum foil tray. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it looks like there's about six of them. And it looks like this is some kind of drip tray. So that's nice. Now let's take a look at this. So this is the main drip tray. You can see that it looks like it has a thin coating of oil and then it's covered with plastic. So I'm gonna leave that on. Another piece of packaging. And then we have the heat deflector on the inside and we have the main uh, cooking pot on the inside along with all the other um, deflector shield and everything. So, and it's got a little tab in here that says remove before use. So. I'll take that off and it looks like the thermostat or the thermometer probe is, uh, is right here. So we'll take this off, little protector, and that looks like it's good to go. So we'll close this up and we'll start installing the legs. So I've got this out of the box now and let me tell you, this is a hefty unit. It's pretty heavy duty and that's a good thing because when you're cooking on this thing for a long period of time, you want this to have a thick gauge of steel and retain all that heat. So I'm pretty happy with the construction of this so far. It feels like really quality materials. Probably helps to do it with an extra pair of hands if you have help, but uh, I'm just doing it myself. So maybe have an extra couple beers when you're doing this because it's, uh, it's a little bit of a, a weight to grapple out of the box. So let's get started with the instructions. The first step is to install the legs. So we've tipped it on its back. I've put some packaging underneath it to tilt it up a little bit. That's what the manual says to install it a little bit easier because it allows the legs to uh, be fastened a little bit easier. And now we're going to load up some of our screws. So we've got these long screws right here and we wanna take some washers and put a washer on this end and then we have another washer and a lock washer. So uh, one, two, three, four, and, and a bolt to keep it on. So, and I'll come around to the front. It's nice to have everything labeled. There's labels on the legs, so three, and underneath you can't see it, but there's another three, so it makes it really easy. It's also helpful to have some knee pads on because you're gonna be kneeling a lot. Maybe steal your wife's gardening knee pads. So we'll slide this into here and we'll line up the holes now your long bolt with a washer on one end goes from the outside to the inside. There we go. And I'm actually going to switch tactics a little bit and load another washer up here onto this bolt and get this other one lined up. There we go. So now, as I said before, we've got our other washer, our spring washer, and the nut to lock everything in place. So we'll just load that onto this. All 
All right, so that's solid and it's tight. Now we're just gonna repeat that process for the remaining three legs. All right, now we need to install the braces for the legs. They look like this. And they're just to provide extra stability between each of the legs here. So for this, we'll need four E-bolts per side. And those are the little stubby bolts in the blister pack. These holes are pre-tapped, so you don't need a bolt on the other end, which is a nice feature because we just have to screw it in with the screwdriver that's been provided in the box by Traeger. So let's get started on that. All right guys, the leg stabilizers are installed. And one thing I did notice is that I accidentally installed this leg the wrong way. So the bolts were, the bolt holes were not facing the right direction. Uh, so something I learned is that it's, uh, the easy way to do it is you just line up the little number. So there's a five or a six and it's color coded and just line up that number facing the inside of the Traeger and you won't have any problems. Uh, you wanna make sure that the bolt holes that plug into this guy, into the stabilizer, are facing inwards. And in my case, they were facing outwards, so I had to fix that up before I moved on to the next step. Maybe, uh, maybe a little bit too much beer, I don't know. So now we want to install this uh, power cable, and Traeger in the manual recommends you install it now, probably because you have easy access to where you wanna plug it in. So. We'll plug this guy into the bottom here. It's pretty easy. It's just like plugging a power cable into a computer. And now we're going to flip this guy up and we'll move on to the next step, which is installing the smokestack or the chimney. Oh, this is where I gotta lift with my legs. All right. Oh boy. All right guys, now we're moving on to installing the chimney. So what we need is an F bolt, a two G washers, and we need an H locking nut. It doesn't look like it calls for a locking nut. So this looks pretty simple. I'm going to leave the chimney cap to the side for a second. I'm gonna thread that washer on it, and then I'll just thread this nut on finger tight. Same deal with the other side. Make sure the gasket is on right. Now for our chimney cap, it's uh, already threaded, so we just need to thread it on. And it automatically stops at the right height, so that's the chimney stack. The next step is this small handle. So we need uh, an eye washer, which are the large gasket style washers, uh, two smaller washers, and these uh, smaller bolts here. And we're kind of going in reverse here. What you need to keep in mind is that this large washer needs to sit like that on the exterior of the unit. So we'll try to line that up. We've got a bolt loaded up with a washer here. So we'll poke it out of that hole through the large washer and into the self-tapped handlebar. And we'll just get that finger tight. And we'll do the same for the other one. Now for the handle lid, it's the same process. We have the same set of bolts. So we'll just uh, load these bolts up with the washers. And we thread it finger tight into the handle. There's probably an easier way to do this if you flip the lid all the way back. It's probably a lot easier, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing. And we're just gonna tighten these bolts up. The next step, step 4B, is to install the heat deflector shield. But uh, as you can see here, this heat deflector shield is already installed into the Traeger, so that's a step that I don't have to do, but maybe yours comes separate, so that might be a step you need to do. It looks like you just need to place it inside. Now we're going to install our heat deflector. I just took this out of the plastic and kind of smells good actually. It smells kind of sweet, which is weird. Must be the oil that's coating the outside, but it's a nice touch. Uh, so this looks pretty simple. All you need to do is slide this huge lip 
into the catch on the left hand side and set it down. So I'll give you a better view here. So we're sliding this in, just settles down into that lip. And then we just pull it back until these two little triangular notches here fit onto this lip. So you can see that's secured onto there. That, that other side is in the triangular notch. So this thing is sturdy. It's not going anywhere. It's at an angle. Always make sure that there's an angle going from the top right all the way down to where the grease exits in that catch uh, because you don't want grease dripping into the bottom of your unit and uh, creating a fire. Uh, so always make sure this thing is installed properly. Very important. This is probably the most important part of the installation. Double check to make sure this thing is installed correctly. Otherwise, you're going to have some big issues. Now all we need to do is install our grill grates. So we'll take our first main porcelain coated grill grate and we'll insert that in. Just like that. And we'll take our top rack and we'll put it in these little holes. I'll give you guys a look. There's these two little holes right here and at the back here, and these legs stick right into them. So there we go. The grate is on. And if you guys want, you can take this off. If you're cooking something big, a big turkey or a brisket in there, just set this grill grate at the back, hook it up and store your top grate there, which is a nice handy feature. And the last step is to install your protector inside of your auger box so you don't get your fingers stuck in the auger or your kids don't put their fingers in there. Uh, this took me a little bit of time to uh, figure out. What you need to do is you need to remove two screws that are inside of uh, this auger box and uh, then you need to uh, install them back in to this uh, plate after putting it in. We've got two little screws here, one, two, that are pre-installed and we want to take those out. And now we take the protecting grid here and we put it in like this. Kind of goes on an angle. And then you put these screws back in. So now all you need to do is install your little grease bucket here. And that just hooks onto that little hook here. And that is the unboxing and assembly of the Traeger 575 Pro. If you guys want to learn how to season and do the initial burn off on this unit, then check this video out right here. That's going to teach you everything you need to know to get started on your Traeger. And if you guys want a full review after I've done a few cooks on this thing, then check out this video right here. If you haven't purchased one of these before and you're deciding whether you want to, or you already own one and you just want to hear my thoughts about it, then check that video out. There's going to be a lot of information there. Thanks a lot, guys. I'll see you in the next video.